I know that a lot of people will download random templates online and just sign on it. This is also very commonly done for other agreements such as joint venture agreement, tenancy agreement or any other agreements. However, do note that downloading any random templates online will actually impose more risk to your rights because the terms that consist in the template that you have downloaded may not be in your favour. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today, we are going to talk about the brief introduction to shareholders agreement and the frequently asked questions relating to shareholders agreement. We are going to split this video into 7 parts. What is shareholders agreement? Do you need a shareholders agreement? Does shareholders agreement bind the company? Does shareholders agreement bind new shareholders? Does shareholders agreement supersede the constitution? Does the shareholders agreement and constitution supersede the Companies Act 2016? And lastly, the conclusion. The relevant timestamps are actually stated here, so please feel free to skip to the part if you think it's relevant to you. If you are starting up a company or entering into a joint venture with a business partner or acquiring another company as your growth and expansion strategy, but you are unsure of the legal terms that seems very alien to you in the agreement or you are unsure of the necessary rights to include in the agreement to safeguard your rights as a shareholder in the company, this video is for you. Alternatively, you may engage a lawyer to assist with the drafting of your shareholders agreement. However, do not, I repeat, do not download or just use any random templates online. I will tell you the reason why in this video. Just a quick introduction, my name is Ashley Yeo and I'm a lawyer practicing in Malaysia. Now, let's get started. First, let's discuss what is shareholders agreement. A shareholders agreement is an agreement between the company and its shareholders. The shareholders agreement, together with the Companies Act 2016 and the Constitution, create rules which the company and the shareholders are required to follow. A shareholders agreement is a contract which includes the information on the management of the company and also the rights and obligation of the shareholders and the company. Next, the question that is frequently asked is, do I need a shareholders agreement? And why do we need a shareholders agreement? The answer that I often hear is we do not need a shareholders agreement because our business is based on trust. Needless to say, having trust between your business partner is definitely a virtue and arguably it is one of the most important factors to consider when you are doing a business. Well, I'm sure that you will not enter into any business relationship with anyone that you do not trust. However, as a lawyer, I always encourage my client to actually sign a shareholders agreement no matter how close you are with the other person or how much do you trust them. Because when things turn ugly, it is the shareholders agreement which you have discussed earlier and agreed upon that will provide a guidance as to how you should proceed. Besides, it is actually very important to make sure that your rights are protected whether as a majority shareholder or minority shareholder. It is very important to put your shareholders agreement in place as soon as the company is incorporated or before it started to trade. As in most cases, it's actually easy for the parties to focus and come up with an agreement at this stage. As opposed to when the business is already up and running, the whole purpose of the shareholders agreement is to avoid disputes in the future. And if there's any dispute arise, this agreement is actually a good instrument for the parties to decide how should they proceed and how such dispute is going to be resolved. I need to highlight that this is actually a much easier and quicker option as opposed to come up with a settlement in the event of dispute. Next. The shareholders agreement by the company? The answer to this is no, unless the company is made a party to the agreement. Next. The shareholders agreement by new shareholders? The answer to this is no. However, it's actually very common to have a clause in a shareholders agreement requiring any new shareholders to execute a document called deed of adherence. Upon the signing of the deed of adherence by the new shareholders, the new shareholders shall be bound by the shareholders agreement and also be entitled to the benefit of the shareholders agreement in place of the shareholder that is transferring the shares to the new shareholders. In practice, the company will not register the new shareholder as the holder of any shares until the deed of adherence has been executed. Next! Does the shareholders agreement supersede the constitution? The answer to this is it depends because the shareholders can actually agree in the shareholders agreement that in the event of any conflict, the shareholders agreement can supersede the constitution. However, do note that the Companies Act 2016 does not require private companies to have constitution. Next! 
the shareholders agreement and constitution supersede the Companies Act 2016? The answer to this is no. I would like to bring section 33 of the Companies Act 2016 to your attention. It states that the constitution of a company has no effect to the extent that it contravenes or is inconsistent with the provisions of the Companies Act 2016. know that a lot of people will download random templates online and just sign on it. This is also very commonly done for other agreements such as joint venture agreement, tenancy agreement or any other agreements. However, do note that downloading any random templates online will actually impose more risk to your rights because the terms that consist in the template that you have downloaded may not be in your favour. You may engage a lawyer to assist with drafting of your shareholders agreement so your rights are well protected. And you need to make sure that the shareholders agreement consists of terms which the parties have agreed upon before signing. Understand that this video is a bit too long, hence I will be addressing the terms which we need to know as majority shareholder and minority shareholder in the next video. I also understand that we are now in MCO 3.0 but signing of document is still possible by e-sign. If you are interested to find out more about e-sign and when you should and should not e-sign, feel free to click on the video here. Hope the information provided to you are helpful to you. Please feel free to comment down below if you have any questions or any other related topics which you'd like me to discuss. I will update this channel on every Thursday at 8pm so stay tuned. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video and bye bye.